The third flap, which is most commonly used, is a Limburg flap or a rhombic flap, sometimes also called as a rhomboid flap. But essentially, by geometrical definition, it's a rhombic flap. And this flap is most commonly used in the face, and it is also used for closure of a pilonidal sinus. Now, in this case, how it differs from a transposition or a rotation flap is that, in this case, we don't triangulate our defect, but instead we convert it into a rhombic flap. So this is our irregular shaped defect. What we need to do is convert it into a rhombic. So in this, what happens is that all sides are equal, and the opposite angles are equal. In this case, the opposite angles are of 60 degrees, and in this side, the opposite angles are of 120 degrees. The most important thing that we have to first find here is the shortest diagonal. Now, if this is our flap A, B, C, and D, B, D is our short diagonal. Now, this B, D, which is our short diagonal, is important because essentially it is also equal to the sides of this flap. So, the point B, D is from where we are going to extend and try and get our flap. Now, once we make this extension B, D, the length is equal to any side of the rhomboid or the rhombic. So once it is equal to the sides, we get this line and from there we again extend a line which is equal to the sides and also parallel to any of the side that we are using in order to plan the movement of our flap depending from where we get the laxity and we don't distort any anatomical structures. So any rhomboid flap is going to give us four flaps. So once you are extended along the short diagonal, which is the most important point, and it has to be equal to the sides of the rhomboid and parallel to them. So essentially, by extending in this manner, what we are going to get are four flaps. So one, two, three, and four. So depending on which is convenient to us and where we get the laxity is where we are going to plan the movement of our flap. So suppose, for example, this is our flap that we are planning and we have converted it into the required shape and we have extended it and we create our flap. So essentially this is going to be our flap A, D, E and F. And these are the original points of the rhomboid that is B and C. So our flap is going to move in this direction and this is the base of the flap from where the blood supply is coming in. Now once the flap moves in this direction, this point D is going to sit at point B, point E is going to come where point C is and ultimately point F is going to come in position of point D. A is going to stay where it is. So ultimately what is going to happen, the final shape of the flap is what is going to definitely be asked after movement is what you're going to get so this is the sides of the flap and this area is from where our flap has moved so ultimately that side of the flap is going to be in this manner so since our flap has moved from this direction obviously there won't be any suture line in that side and the closure that we'll attain here is primarily so this is going to be A, D, E, and F. And our flap is going to close in this manner. So similarly, what you need to do essentially is plan the flap in such a manner where you get the maximum laxity. So we have these four flaps from the short diagonal. And depending on whichever flap you use for movement, you're going to get different types of closures. So you should practice with each of these sides as to how the closure is going to be attained. Similarly, if you rotate it and you see the picture, in that same case, you also need to know if the short diagonal goes in this direction, how all the four flaps are going to move. Now, in the modifications that are there for the rhomboid flap, there is also a double and a triple rhomboid flap. So in the case of a double rhomboid flap, this is the type of flap that we will have. So this flap one and two, these are going to be the two rhomboids and this is A and B that are the two flaps and this is going to be the final picture. There is also a triple rhomboid or a triple Limburg or a Mercedes sign of flap where essentially the defect is first made into a circle. 
you take the radius of the circle and you have marked the either sides of the hexagon and then ultimately you are supposed to take any three sides of the hexagon in an alternating manner. So we pick these points 1, 2 and 3 from where equal to the length of the radius of the circle is where we are going to extend it and we are going to get three flaps 1, 2 and 3 and they are all going to rotate and sort of close in a pinwheel fashion. So these are the types of Limburg flap, the simple original Limburg flap, double rhomboid and the triple Limburg flap.